Now we will do our class exercise on Nissan et al. 1997. I had already briefly talked about this when I was doing an overview of the examples of metabolic network uh, based uh, flux predictions from 90s. So the paper was published in 1997, a paper by Jens Nissen's group, and it is on uh, anaerobic Saccharomyces cerevisia. This is the a screenshot from the abstract and yeah the abstract of the paper. Let's read the abstract. <clears throat> it says that a stoichiometric model describing the anaerobic metabolism of Saccharomyces cerevisia during growth on a defined medium was derived. The stoichiometric matrix consists of 37 pathway reactions involving 43 compounds of which 13 were measured and here you see the list of measured rates they were able to measure so many rates and the model was used to calculate production rates of malate fumarate and ethanol to validate the model. So, uh, here they use a determined system. They have so many measured rates and they have a small system. They have enough measured rates to make the system determined. They have two cases. They have performed the experiments, this anaerobic growth of Saccharomyces cerevisia, on two different growth rates. This is um, chemostat experiments indeed. One was performed at a dilution rate of 0 0.10, the other was performed at a dilution rate of 0 0.30. This is the predicted fluxes they report in their paper for the dilute point one. I have already talked about this before. These early examples most of the time use carbon mole concept. Here too, the fluxes are reported in terms of carbon moles. So by using this carbon mole concept, you easily see that if there's 100 units of glucose consumed, about 6% of 6 of it is going to pentose phosphate pathway, 90% of it is going to glucose for ex glycolysis, for example, 50% is going to the ethanol production, 9% is going to the glycosylation, etc., and 2% about is going to the TCA cycle. So you can nicely see how many percentage of the carbon is going to which pathway. And this is an example of the reactions they reported. You can see that they reported the reactions in terms of carbon moles. Normally, glucose is combined with ATP to make glucose 6-phosphate. But in, in glucose, there is six carbon. So they wrote all the reactions in terms of single uh, So in this case, there is six carbon, six carbon. They divide all the coefficients with six. So you would have a coefficient of 1 over 6 for ATP.
for here, let's look at the reaction 14, a reaction in pentose phosphate pathway. We know that ribose 5-phosphate has 5 carbon, erythrose 4-phosphate has 4 carbon, and fructose 6-phosphate has 6 carbon. The coefficients were written such that there is a carbon balance. So there is one carbon, if you write it in carbon mole, there is one carbon mole of ribose 5-phosphate, and 2, of, two over 5 of this carbon goes to erythrose 4-phosphate, 40% okay, of it, and 60% of it goes to fructose 6 phosphate, 2 over 5. If you sum up the coefficients 2 over 5 plus 3 over 5, it will make 1. So 1 carbon mole is going to 0 0.4 carbon here, 0 0.6 carbon here. And here they have a note. They say that compounds in bold letters are included in this stoichiometric matrix. We talked about this before. If you have ATP, you don't need to write a balance around ADP because they repeat. In each reaction, there is, if there is ATP, there is also ADP. They will make dependent rows. So, including ADP balance in your system will not uh, lead to any additional information. So, now, this was your homework to construct the corresponding stoichiometric matrix. My question is, what is the dimension of stoichiometric matrix that you have constructed for the system? Can you please tell the dimensions through the chat window? One group said their dimension is 45 times 44. One other group said it is 60 times 37. And the other group said it is 43 times 48. And one other group said it is 30 to 37. So it's amazing that out of four different groups, there is no uh, common results. They all reported very different stoichiometric matrices. They all have different number of mass balances, different number of mass balances around metabolites, and they all have different number of unknowns. Well, we have 37 here again. So, in this session, we will try to understand why we have these uh, differences and uh, how we can uh, solve the problems in defining stoichiometric matrix, if any. If we check the reaction system, they report, they have 37 reactions. So this 37 is coming from there. And they also, in the paper, give the number of compounds in the system just above the reaction list, and it is 43. So based on their list, 
there are 43 metabolites and 37 uh, reactions. So this is the initial numbers with what of what uh, we have. But we should always keep in mind the definition of how to construct a mass balance for a given system, how we should consider the system boundary properly, especially for exchange reactions. <laughs> 